Staying Alive UK. Share your story. <laughs> Hello and welcome, Sandra. How are you today? I'm good. How about you, Michael? I'm really well and I'm really excited to um, talk to you today because I know you have lots to share on the Share Your Story podcast. And I'm really excited. And it was amazing how we met because I was running a LinkedIn social audio event last year and you yeah. came on it and you shared some really amazing things with us all. And the one thing that I picked up on that I really wanted to try out was do my podcast on Zoom and stream mm -hmm. life to LinkedIn. And hopefully this is what we're doing right now. Uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. And also, I believe it's very timely. So don't say anything yet. We'll have to keep people in suspense. It's very timely because you and what you're doing, you've gone through a new rebrand and launch with all the things that you're doing. So I'm excited to learn about that. So I asked the same question to all my guests uh, that come on the podcast. And by the way, this is the first ever podcast interview that I've done live um, and have it streamed live. So thank you for being a guinea pig. <laughs> uh, and thank you for inspiring me to have a go. And we had lots of technical issues, didn't we, just now? And uh, that was really interesting what was going on. But anyway, it's working now. Fingers crossed it will. Regardless, even if we lose connection, we will yeah. still have the audio and we'll have the video recording of this as well. So, okay. right, let's get into it. So mm -hmm. my only question I ever ask, apart from others that will come up, I'm sure, is Sandra, tell us your story and how did you get to where you are today? Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. Thanks for this opportunity to share my story especially because I used to be on the other end and now I am on this end. <laughs> okay, so my name is Sandra Adeya Yibelo. I'm popularly known as the different woman. I got the um, initial, the different woman from being a woman who was challenging the status quo and the status quo being that women had some limitations women were supposed to be seen not heard women so many things you know it, it felt like yeah. the woman was to be everything else but the owner of our story the person who um knew who she was or owned her voice or even her spotlight you know i i am an african i'm nigerian and it's almost a challenge when you look at um, a woman from way back, you see women across boards and you see that there are systems that actually protect the woman, that give the woman an opportunity to, you know, seek for justice and actually get justice, you know, yes. but down here, um, a lot of things are still crawling. Yes, we're making progress, we're making strides, but I still think we are a long way from there. And that's where I come in. That's where I got the name, The Different Woman, because I felt at the time, even without knowing or reaching out to the global world, which LinkedIn allows me to, you know, connect to right now, I felt that women could be more. I felt that we could have more. I felt that we could, you know, do more for ourselves. And that's when people started looking at me like, hey, okay, why is she different? Why is she different? So it stuck. So that's why I'm called The Different Woman. Now, um, professionally, right. I am a media practitioner. I went to school. I studied theater. And um, while way back, let's backtrack just a bit. And um, I would say theater actually opened me to a different world because, like I said, before I even became the different woman, I had a lot of challenges um, growing up. Um, a traumatic childhood, I must say, because I watched my mother suffer several years of domestic violence and I am a secondary survivor because the spillovers, you know, when you're turning into a cop, 
and the cup overflows. I took the overflow. I watched her, you know, cry a lot of times. I still have some of those shrieks in my head. Um, I nursed her injuries. You know, you see your mother's flesh, you know, flapping out and blood all over. You have to clean, you have to stitch, you know, and this continued for a long time. Um, wow. I remember asking her why she stayed in that relationship and she would always say, um, you know, like I said earlier, we come from a society where um, things such as marital rape is treated like a family issue. So, and when a woman's marriage fails, I say woman's marriage now because I want to sound like us right now, but marriage is supposed to be about two people coming together. But here it's called a woman's marriage right so yeah. if a man fails it's the woman's fault automatically people automatically start asking her what did you do what 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 didn't you do right you know yeah. so it felt like she couldn't leave because the stigma the shame she continued to ask the question where does she go to and of course um ab abuse is something that takes a long time and it takes a toll on the victim. The victim becomes completely dependent on their abuser for everything, yes. including their finances. And of course, you cannot just tell a woman to pick up and leave if she has no money. So I think mo the, the main thing that happened was she couldn't leave because of all the stigma around in the society. And also she was not financially um, empowered to leave. Of course. They then, you know, growing up as a child, as a girl child, of course, in the same society, I, I looked at my mother as a role model and I felt, no, I don't want to be her. I don't want to be like her. And of course, that's where the different woman um, character started to come to play. Um, it became it became my my goal, you know, to do different, to be different. I wanted to change that story. I didn't want to replay or repeat the same things in my life. And that's how I started to, you know, um, come out. And I started writing from a very young age. I started writing poetry, stories. And in those stories, I created sheroes, like I love to call them. I created sheroes. Women who, you know, did things that were absurd in my society, you know, superheroes, things that were not um, seen or heard of about women in my community while I was growing up. So a lot of my stories revolved around women, you know, challenging the status quo, coming out, speaking their truth and so on until I got into university where I studied theater arts. And that's why I say that was the chain. That was, that, that was the, the exposure I needed to yes. the other forms of expression. Yeah. For me, it, it was the ex, it, it was that exposure I needed because the moment I studied theater arts, I learned the various every other form of you know expression. Yes, now I am also a mental health practitioner, and right. I realized a lot of the things that I went through cost me trauma as a mm. child. Yeah, and I grew up an angry, um, irritated. I was easily, you know, I was withdrawn. I, I couldn't even speak in public. I couldn't even, you know, there were, there were just a lot of things that I was different basically until I started to study theater. And then I learned that I could express through music, dance, yeah. drama. Yeah. And, you know, I already said I started writing way back. So writing just became, I could now create characters that I could see. You know, it wasn't just in my writing. It wasn't just in words anymore. I could create women on stage, you know, put those characters on stage. And when people played them, you would just see me shedding tears. Like I see my characters come to life. And it was empowering for me. It was empowering for me. Now, today, I understand that. Mm. I went through a series of incidents so that I would be able to help women like me go yeah. through this situation. Um, Trauma is something that we really don't talk about in the African society, especially when we talk about mental health. In fact, right. when we talk about mental health, it's like um, we have over-spiritualized it here or we try to avoid it because everyone feels like we're just surviving, we're just thriving. You know, Everyone will just be like, when you, when you talk about what you're going through, 
uh, people will be like, um, it's like when a contest of who suffers the most. So I'm coming to tell you now, hey, Michael, do you know I had a heartbreak? And you'll be like, really? Don't huh. worry about me. Um, I've gone through worse. Like you start mm. to tell me story. And I, I feel like um, I'm trying to share with you. But it, it feels like there is this wall we all put up in our society. And it's not helped. But I now realize that all of those things contributed to helping me, to developing me to who I am today. Sure. Now I own the story. Now I can share with women. I can relate to women who are also going through the same things. And that's, um, that's why I created my social enterprise, the Different Woman Network. Right. The Different Woman Network allows me to merge my passion for gender and mind wellness with my career in the media. So um, I started my career in radio. I started, yeah. I, I went on to do print. I went on to do um, TV and also films. So now I merge all of that into the Different Woman Network, which is a multimedia and events company. So I create films, I create documentaries, I, I write. I do a lot of content creation around mostly impactful um, content, impactful, um, you know, um, ideas. That's what I do. So it's mostly about impact for me using the media, you know, to create impact, to influence social um, behavioral change. So that's what it is for me today. That's where I am at today. And of course, I have a bias for women, of course, because of course, first of all, I'm a woman and um, I've connected with women across the globe currently. And it feels like, yes, we are in different locations and we are experiencing different things. But at the end of the day, our stories are almost alike, very yes. connected. You know, we're still going through these same challenges when we talk about um, emotional health and also financial empowerment. There is still a long way to go. You know, till tomorrow on LinkedIn, we still talk about women not having equal pay. You know, for yeah. the same jobs they get with men. And we still talk about, um, you know, being overqualified for certain jobs. And then uh, people will be like, um, why don't you start from so, so, and so? Like, maybe they tell you to start from a basic role because you're a woman, you know? Or you have to fight harder for something that you deserve and so on. So there's still a long way to go globally. And that's where um, I created the Women's Club. The Women's Club creates an opportunity for women to support one another. And also, um, it's an opportunity for women to go beyond the hashtags. So I know that with social media right now, we have a lot of trends, a yeah. lot of trends. Today, you see end GBV. Tomorrow, you see end rape. Tomorrow, you see women supporting women and so on. So all these hashtags continue to ring. But what yeah. are they? hashtags yeah. the moment people are done making you know and then they are done oh everybody forgets and moves on to something else but the woman remains the woman remains the struggle yeah. remains yeah. so what are we doing about those real life situations those real life challenges that we're going through as women that's why i created this and because i believe that women are the ones to solve women's problems not you know um you can't, you can't actually mess up your home and go and call your neighbors or strangers to come clean it up. So yeah. over time, I think we've played the victim for too long, you know, expecting help to come from outside. Yeah. But of course we understand, we, we should know that everything begins from the inside, internally, our mind. So that's what the women's club is focused on now, to empower mm. the woman emotionally and financially, bring women together, educate them, empower yeah. them we should ourselves this is not about um i i hate tags i hate tags um it's not about a feminist movement or anything because i feel like those have been bastardized and you know overused or abused um, yeah. those terms but i feel like this is a wake-up call for women to come together and do what needs to be done we cannot keep crying over something that has been going on repeatedly. We need to do something about it. That's where the Women's Club comes in. And also, I launched my talk show. It's a storytelling talk show. Of course, I told you I merged my passion and career, right? Yes. So I launched a talk show recently because I feel like we don't have inspiration enough 
of um, our stories out there. So we know that there is a lot of revolution right now going on in the media, you know, trying to create the DEI, you know, diversity and inclusion and so on. So what we need mostly of, what we actually need as women is more representation of women like ourselves, women like yes. who we want to be in the media. So we've been told about how we should be continuously, how, you know, from the magazine, from TV, but they all paint this perfect picture of who a woman is. Oh, she's got it together. Oh, I remember there was a time, this is not to throw shade now, but I remember there was a time that um, Kim Kardashian, you know, when she was pregnant and then she was strutting in heels, you know, when yes. she was strutting in heels, everybody started like, oh, she makes pregnancy look so easy, you know? And people started comparing down here, like, and someone will get pregnant and she will sleep on the couch and so on. And I was like, hey, do you know pregnancies are different? Do you know women are different? Do you know our bodies are different? You know, mm. there is a lot that goes into but this comparison from the magazine covers, from reality TV shows, from, you know, what the media is selling to us as, you know, human beings, as women, has been this perfect picture of who we are or who we should be. So a lot of women are going through depression, anxiety, and even sorts of suicide. Do you know someone doesn't like their nose because um, it, it's not as pointed as someone they see on TV? I you know, know, people are getting the People are getting depressed every single day because of certain things. So my talk show is focused on bringing the real of the realest to inspire women to see themselves in women like them. Let us yeah. start to talk about this. We are going through a lot. We need to talk about it to inspire someone so people don't, you know, think it's just about the gleam and glam that they see on TV or social media. Yeah. There is that goes into our lives. We put in the work, we put in the effort, we go through the same challenges that people go through. So we need to tell those stories the way it is. So, so that someone out there doesn't continue to, you know, um, continue to compare their lives, their reality to someone else's one speck of their life. You know, when someone is so perfect, you know, we don't really post most of our behind the scenes. We post only our perfect lives, you know, on That's social right. media. So That's what right. do you do with, yeah. What I'm trying to do with the different woman show is to show the real stories, amplify women's voices, spotlight ordinary women in our societies doing extraordinary things. That's okay. what that is about. So I'm yeah. going to I'm going to ask you to pause for a sec and I'm going to I'm going to wind back a little bit. But thank you for that brilliant introduction and summary okay. and the amazing work that you're doing for women. I really appreciate it. And here is a man interviewing a woman who is helping other women. So I'm honored that I'm, you know, can do this. Ideally, it should have been a woman interviewing you. But also, <laughs> I believe men have to learn about this too, right? Because yeah. men get it yeah. wrong all the time. And I say mm -hmm. this to my wife, sometimes when I hear some of the stories come out of the news, I go, sometimes I am embarrassed to be a man because men out there are giving us men a really bad reputation you know so your mother's partner is giving all men a bad reputation every single man that does bad things towards women is giving men a bad reputation all over the world and it's very very disappointing to hear it so i'm going to wind back a little bit you mentioned that you started writing at a very early age do you remember how old you were yeah. when you started? Mm, okay, so when I became very, when I became very conscious of it, I think that should be from about 10 years old. 10 right. years old, I started, yeah. I think I became conscious of my writing. It wasn't just schoolwork anymore. I know I started writing, you know, recreating our um, primary school um text stories there was there were stories in our english um our english um textbooks but i yeah. felt like they could be written in better forms i used to rewrite them you know it, it just recreate the story so you see tortoise did this and then i would do a series on that you know other incidents but when i became conscious about 
what exactly I was expressing. I think it was 10 years old from 10 years old. Okay, brilliant. And do you think that that was like a route for you to, you know, a bit of escapism from what was going on around you in the family home? And you were able yes. to kind of go into your own little world of stories. Yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. effectively what you did, I mean, they do say this, that whether you do journaling or writing or, you know, and especially when you then talk about the creative arts as well, it's an outlet mm -hmm. to help support some of, you know, the trauma that you went through to try and, it's yeah. almost self-healing, isn't it? Would you agree? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, true. I do, especially now that I'm a, a mental health practitioner as well. Yeah. Um, there is something we call talk therapy. Um, and then we always say that the moment the patient, the help seeker begins to express, they are already on the path to healing. Yeah. So for me, um, the reason I think I did not turn out totally bad, <laughs> I want to put it like that, is because yes. probably had that space to express in my own way yes so i used to write poetry a lot and at a young age someone who is older would pick up my poem and be like what are you trying to say here mm. so my my pen was hidden in words things that were so deep most people would not really couldn't understand they couldn't just decode it in those few lines i was writing so I think it was, it was so, it, it was an expression. It was a healing process I was undergoing even while through still in the trauma, in, even while still experiencing trauma. Right. It helped me to stay sane. It helped me to stay sane. It helped me to, you know, hope, to keep hoping. I think it helped to build my resilience as well because I kept hoping. I told you I created characters that went yes. through the same things and came out on the other end so when I create those characters I felt a bit of hope I felt like yes something could change I felt like if this could you know if I could think it there is a yes. possibility that this kind of life was out there I could I could attain that kind of life I could reach that kind of life in fact my mother's um, husband actually said I wasn't going to go to school you know but hey mm -hmm. this is I went graduate. I've written books and I've taught, um, you know, held workshops, seminars, and so on. This is me, yeah. very educated. So these were things that if I had assimilated, if I had um, soaked up all of those negativity, I, I don't know where I would say, I, I don't even want to compare. I don't even want to think about where that life would no. have led to, but I'm thankful for the life I have now. I'm thankful for the fact that, you know, I found or writing found me you know, when it did, because yes. I think that was that that was a good process for me. And also when you write stories that could be your life story in the future, you it's a it's a way to visualize what might happen for yourself. So you're kind of yeah. going, this is the story I want to live in. <laughs> And you pull it towards you effectively. You know, you're moving in that direction because, yeah. you know, if you know anything about, I'm sure you do, the law of attraction, then effectively mm -hmm. you're moving in that direction by wishing for it, by writing it down, mm -hmm. by saying, this is the kind mm -hmm. of life I want to move towards. And that's how you manifested mm -hmm. all the education and you know, going into drama and the arts and TV and radio and everything else in the media. It's incredible. So do you think then, so what's your view on having gone through the trauma that you went through in the family mm -hmm. home and everything that yeah. you saw and that in effect being a message for you to do this work that you're doing today? Because without it, yeah. you wouldn't be doing this work today, correct? Correct, correct. I actually feel like that, I, I, and I am also thankful most times, whenever I count my blessings, I know a lot of people um, 
forget to count their days of um, pain as well. Yes, I know there are two types of pain. The one that, you know, drags you down, the one that holds you back. And there is the pain that propels you, the pain that makes you uncomfortable and helps you to see the solution. Right. I think I am thankful for that kind of pain. I'm thankful that I had to go through it because today I have met a lot of women and I can, even though I cannot walk entirely in their shoes, I can't say I can completely relate to every single woman I, I have encountered, but I can tell you that, hey, I can feel that pain. I know where you're at at this time. You know, yes. I can I can actually I can actually um, relate to when you say you feel empty, when you say you feel lonely, when you say you feel um, you feel like you're just existing, when you say you feel like you're just floating, when you feel like you are confused about where you're at, what you're supposed yeah. to do with your life, where to go from there. I can feel all of those things when I see women say those things. So my own story helps me to be able to guide like a guide to more women hey there is hope yeah. there is hope that's one of the things i i think like i said earlier the the stories i created gave me hope and when we talk about mental health to help anyone you know through their trying times through depression and all of that what we really want to do is to help the person hope again yeah to hang on to hope. we want them to feel that there is something to fight for there is yeah. still something out there for me i wanted to i wanted to i think i had a lot to prove not just to my mom not just to the husband but even to me i wanted to prove that there is more to the life that we were given mm. there is more to the life that we knew there is more to you know just being a woman we're yeah. not just women we we can we can actually thrive we don't have to just try to survive you know because of course that's what we were taught you know just survive another day just survive another day mm. no we can actually thrive actually yeah. live we can act contribute our values let our light shine I want to see that life. I want to experience that life. I'm not there yet, but hey, I am so far from where I started from. And I am yeah. grateful for every step in that journey. Brilliant. Thank you. It's interesting, isn't it? Because unfortunately, society has to change too. And so when things are almost you mentioned earlier that it's almost expected to be this way. You know, if a marriage fails, it's the woman's fault. You know, what did you do wrong? That narrative has to change. It, it shouldn't be like that at all. And how, how can you, with the work that you're doing, start to move that story that people are telling that that's what is expected how can you help yeah. change that as well? Okay. So what we already started doing on the Different Women Network. So the Different Women Network is my social enterprise. It's, yes. Um, where I merge my passion and my business together. So we create content that are impact-based. And if you go through some of the productions we already engaged so in, most of the work we do helps us to create an internal to external overflow and right. this i mean uh, in the sense that we try to help the woman understand that you need to fix you first before yes. you can fix the society and what we do with that is create content that empowers the woman emotionally because bob marley put it in the right way mental slavery so a lot of things um a lot of the knots that we encounter in our lives, even as um, women, is the fact that, even as a society, is the fact that a lot of women still would stand up to fight you. I have had a lot of, a lot of the challenges, unfortunately, um, I have faced or encountered come from women themselves. 
women who are yeah. scared to embrace this new picture, women who are scared to, you know, own the difference, you know, in what they already knew and what can be. So what we that's try natural, to do is though, That's natural, though, isn't it? Because they've been conditioned to believe that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's all, but we are already working on that. So what yeah. we try to do is it's that internal to external because the truth is you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot yes. ask the society to give you what you yourself have not given to yourself. So what we try to do is create content that shows the woman where we are also failing. And if we can step it up a bit, we can now ask you know, the society to step up, to meet us there. So yeah. that's what we are doing. Because at the end of the day, the woman still remains the wife, the mother, the sister, the auntie, you know, we are yeah. connected to people in society. So how do you treat yourself? People treat you the way you treat yourself. So yes. are you taking something that you're not supposed to be taking? Are you building those boundaries? Are you enforcing them? You know, some of these things are things that enable the society to adjust. So we are trying to empower the woman to see that, hey, if you feel like saying no, you shouldn't be apologetic about saying no. You yeah. might just be uncomfortable. You need to let people know that you're uncomfortable. So that's what we're doing right now, creating content, creating things that empower the woman to also start to stand up for herself, to say how she really feels so that we can get rid of those shame and stigma in our yeah. society. Yeah. And feel shame. She's shamed by other women. And then the society picks up on this circle and we continue to go in the same circle. Yet we are asking for things to change. Things don't mm -hmm. just change because you see, oh, we have to put in the work. So that's what we are doing, putting in the work, creating this content, you know, that helps people, women see themselves in characters that we create and say, oh, okay, I can relate to this character. Then you see your flaws and then you start to adjust so that when you're a mother and you're raising your children, you would understand that, hey, you don't need to give preference to your boys because they are boys. Raise yeah. the boys, raise the um, there is a there, there is a short film I created that said, when you raise your daughters and you refuse to raise your sons, you let the your your good daughters go and marry, <laughs> you know, the boys that you didn't raise. What are you expecting in the society? So we need to raise our children together. So these are the reasons we are starting from ourselves, internal to the external, so that we can give from what we already know what we already feel what we already um, understand and like and you know are comfortable with so that the society begins to adjust of course most of this um most of our stories are not just for women alone when men also get to watch these films they get to see some of the flaws as well that they are also oh i'm falling short here as well okay so this is oh i didn't know that while i was doing this i'm causing this woman to be uncomfortable oh i didn't know yeah. that doing this will make her own I didn't know that if I did this, she would feel. So it's not an attack on anybody. It's just a way of us, you know, saying the message, saying it as it is. Of course, the theater is a mirror to the society, yes. right? So what we do is mirror the society back to itself and see that, hey, if we say we are broken, this is where we got broken. Yeah. This is yeah. where we got broken. So let's stitch it. Let's start to tape it. Let's start to make it work. Let's find a way to, you know, we, we can't throw ourselves away at the end of the day. We are existing on the same earth. So there's nowhere to run to. We have to fix it. We have to fix it. Even if we run, avoid it for 100 years, we'll still come back to it. So we need to start now to start to fix it. Brilliant. It's amazing the work you're doing. And are you seeing some evidence that it's starting to work? Are you seeing this in the people that you help and the people that you speak to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's so, most, time, most times I cry. Most times I break down when I receive reviews from women who say, Sandra, I've not chatted with you. I don't engage with your post, but they inspire me. Sandra, I love what you're doing. Like I get these messages and then I see that women are beginning to speak out. Women want to share their stories now. You know, women want to, you know, be more than, they now hunger for more. And yeah. it's so beautiful because even when we, we've not officially launched the women's club, 
but we've been talking about it. We've been creating events around it, talking about the need for this club. You can see women rallying around. You can see the group is already growing, right? right. We, we have an uh, app on um, Google Play Store, Twerk, the women's club. And you can also see it on LinkedIn, Twerk, the women's club. The club, we are receiving requests to join every day and we've not officially launched. The launch is actually set for March. But you can right. see that women want part of this because women yes. want to be happy. Women want to leave. So it's inspiring. It, it, it inspires me to do more because I see that, hey, this is needed. This yes. is needed. It's life changing. When we host um, our, our virtual um, audio events. I host audio events on LinkedIn as well. Every Sunday, it's focused on empowering the woman emotionally and financially. When we have these conversations and then we open the floor for guests to come on stage to join us, you would see that a lot of women will come up and be like, I love these conversations you're having. We really need to start talking about these things. Yes. You would see the hunger for these things because it feels like, hey, we've been so apart. We've been isolated for so long. I love that you're doing this. So these reviews keep me going. Even yeah. men, men join things and they're like, they start to invite women. They say, go, go and join them because this looks like the revolution we've been looking for. There is no hate. It is all about love, non-judgmental yeah. zone. It has nothing to do with all the biases that the society has peddled or sold to us. It is just pure humans trying to be happy, yeah. you know, to come ways that we can create this solution that we seek through dialogue through one act of um effort one effort or the other one effort at a time that's what we're trying to do yeah. so it's it's it inspires me every day when i hear people the reviews you know people coming in people connecting with me it always inspires me and i thank everyone who is watching right now and feeling like yeah i know sandra yeah <laughs> Thank you. Because of you, I keep doing this. It's because of you, I keep going. Seriously. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I have a challenge for you, Sandra, and that is the amazing work that you're doing with the groups of women that you're educating and assisting and helping them lift them up, um, help them to fill their cup so it overflows and develop that yeah. sense of happiness and a way forward for the future and see themselves mm -hmm. in the stories that they are creating for themselves. And mm -hmm. what about helping men um, be educated about this, um, helping men to change their ways in the way that they perceive women and the way they treat women around the world? Well, let's start small, one step at a time. But I really yes. do think there is a need for more education towards men to help them understand. What do you think? Yes, I think so too. I agree with you. And um, I'm sure a lot of other organizations are doing a lot to empower and educate men as well. Yeah. Um, yes. But what we are focused on mainly is using storytelling to um, pass our messages across. So although our bias and focus is on the woman, yeah. it doesn't stop us from talking about the man as well. So um, unlike probably um, people would expect, it's not a feminist movement where we are um, hating on men. No, it is not. But what we're trying to do is find the solutions to issues. Our focus are on issues yes. that concern the woman. And of course, you cannot talk about the woman without talking about the man in yes. her life. It could be as a son, it could be as a brother, it could be as a husband, you know, as a partner and so on. So we cannot avoid talking about the man. We cannot avoid bringing the man into the picture. So we do that as well. But like yeah. I said, it is one step at a time for us, one effort at a time. So yeah. right now, like the reason I use the internal to external is we're still coming from the internal. Right. By the time we start to um, explore the external, then the society would be in the picture. Um, 
the men will be mostly will become our focus as well but for now it is from the internal to the external so we're still building we're still working on you know um the woman brilliant okay well that's good to know it's good that the in the future the direction you're going in is obviously focus on the internal and then move to the external because yes you know we love to be involved in the conversation that's yes really really what i think i would be saying personally mm -hmm. it's good to be part mm -hmm. of the conversation because the, otherwise would leaves men with a feeling of the damage has been done and we we can't we're almost helpless you know there is nothing what is it that we can do or what is it that we should do or what is it that we should do differently in order to help your movement help your you know your group succeed um okay. across the world so yeah yep. let us help if we can that's really what i'm saying yes please <laughs> yes please come on board we welcome you on board first of all i think it starts with dialogue please start yeah. to talk to your woman start to talk to the woman because i think a lot of men avoid talking especially when we want to talk about deep talks you know yes. we need you to have conversations with us we need you to have those deep talks with us except yes. you talk yes except you talk to us because a lot of times men would say the, wo the woman is being sentimental she's talking from an emotional point of view and um i think science already proves that men are more logical or you know and women are more emotional and so on but i want to believe that we are all humans and yes. we have different we have these parts as well in various capacities so I think it will start from the dialogue, just the same way we are having conversations amongst ourselves. It will be lovely to have a man sitting, of course, men sitting during our, um, our weekly conversations that we have on LinkedIn, men joining, and we call them our he for she's. So we want, we want these men to also be part of the conversation because you cannot know it all, that's the truth. Even we as women, you know, unless we start to talk about it, sometimes we are going through some things and we don't even know why we're going through it. You know, sometimes the woman is just sad and you ask her, why are you sad? And she said, I don't know, but I just don't feel right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so no. <laughs> yes. So, but when we start to talk, when we start to explore, you know, mm. maybe incidents or happenings that have occurred, then she starts to, oh, okay, this is why I feel like this so yeah. but most times the man is so far from i don't know if it's our society or cultural you know biases and so on that um thinks the man should not you know feel so much or engage in such deep conversations but we really need men to come on board these conversations because we are all figuring life out that's the truth we are all figuring life out no one has got it all together and i think it will be easier for all of us if we can you know understand each other to a point and yeah. keep the channel of communication open for us to be able to continue to bring things to the table so i don't need to feel um shut down when i'm trying to talk to you to express and yeah. yes i think this one is very common because i've heard people say you're shouting you know and then the woman would shut down yeah. there is i wanted to share with you um i don't know if you've ever seen a video on youtube i think it's something called like the tale of two brains and okay. it's um it's a very clever guy i don't know if he's a comedian or not i'll send it to you but he okay. can he visually um acts out the difference between a woman's brain and a man's brain and it's so good and it's so funny it makes you laugh but it's so true as well you know and he basically explains the wiring in a woman's brain and the wiring in a man's brain and in essence he kind of says you know the man's brain he has like a filing cabinet with a few drawers in it and everything is in the drawers you know so if he needs to go somewhere in his brain he just opens that drawer 
And that draw is just for that part in his brain. And that's it. And if he needs to go and do something else, he'll go to another draw. And that's where everything is in the draw that he needs. He doesn't need mm -hmm. to be in two drawers at the same time. And he then moves to this like mannequin head, which is the woman's brain. And he just goes, this is the woman's brain. And he goes. Z -z 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 <laughs> the wires. The wires are all over the place because women can do so many things at the same time in their brain, whereas men can't, you know. And I think this goes back to when we were, you know, in the jungle, living in the jungle and the man was out hunting. He just had one thing to do is get food to get back to the cave. And the woman was in the cave having to make sure the children weren't running out and being in danger and do all of the other things that she needed to do. And I think our brain developed in that way because man was just focused on doing one thing at a time, you know. Um, so yeah, Michael, I don't want to, I don't want to cut you halfway, but I don't want this to go off without, you know, us concluding the battery of this device is low right now. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, um, yeah, that have a look at that. Anybody who's listening, have a look at the Taylor two brains and it's just magical to educate yourself on the differences between our brains, between men and women, there is a difference and we need to appreciate it. That's all I was going to say. True, so Sandra, true, true, true. Let's, let's conclude then uh, in case we get cut off again. So how can people get involved in all the wonderful things that you're doing? How can they find you, learn about you? Obviously they can find you on LinkedIn, but where else can they connect with you? Oh, they can connect with us via our website, um, www.tdwnmedia.xyz. T for Tay, D for Dog, W for Woman, N for Network. So tdwnmedia.xyz. Um, and also we're on um, Instagram. We're on YouTube. You can check my YouTube out, The Different Woman TV, TDWN Media. Um, these are two um, YouTube links. You can check us out as well. We are constantly looking for support um, to enable us make more productions, more content, and so on. So employ our services or come on board as a sponsor. We are constantly looking to connect, to collaborate, to partner. So please feel free to reach out. Um, you can also send me an email on the differencewoman at gmail.com. Um, other, I'm sure all of these links, um, I would send it over to uh, Michael and you're going to get them easily. Yeah, they'll, they'll all be in the show notes and so people can connect with you. And then, um, yeah, that's the best way to get hold of you. And when you say yeah. it's the Different Woman Network, so it's TD Woman, WN. TDWN N. for November yes. Media. Yes. Yeah. Right, right, right. Got it. Okay, brilliant. Fantastic. Sandra, thanks so much and persisting with all the technology challenges that we had today. Thank but we you. got it done. We got it done. And thank you so yes, much for helping me stream this live to LinkedIn. And sorry to the LinkedIn viewers or listeners that we had a few glitches along the way. But yeah. uh, obviously, if people are watching the replay, on YouTube or they're listening to the audio version, they won't have experienced all those glitches because I will have cut them out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. All right, Sandra, I'll be in touch soon. Thank you so much okay. for sharing your story. I loved hearing Thank all you. the amazing things that you're doing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye you, Michael. For Bye, Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.